Welcome to Detox Your Daily Habits, the show where we have raw and vulnerable conversations around spirituality, get real about how messy personal growth is, and bring to light the truths of how hard it is to break through your limiting beliefs in order to trust your higher self. Hey guys, welcome back. It's episode six. Yes, I always forget what episode we're on, but dang, I can't believe it's already uh, uh, episode (laughs) six. (laughs) Time is flying and it's been a fun ride so far. We can't wait to do more. Yeah, and so I'm going to give you a little life date on like what life update on what's happening in my current life. I don't, D, I don't know if D wants to, but I am personally, I just got a job i'm interviewing for another one that's what's been going in my life lately i've been putting a lot of effort towards that and just sprucing up some resumes that's honestly what my life's been going on but um uh danielle doing yeah Yeah, same uh really we're on the same track here as per usual both of us trying to kind of pivot uh, in a direction so that we can be more financially secure. Stable, yeah. Uh, doing delivery work has been getting us by, but we're both kind of people that enjoy security more than we do um, the, what we've been doing lately. And so it's been very hard for me personally. I can't always speak for Dakota, but... Mm, but I'm right there with I, <laughs> creatively, Creatively, it's very hard for me to focus when I am not financially secure. All of my brain power goes to working towards what can I do here to make money here. What and It's just not good for my energy flow. And so I'm kind of taking a step back and getting another serving and bartending job and kind of uh, splitting up my time in between the delivering and that. So it's not all back balls deep in the restaurant industry because... That can get kind of messy too. Yeah, we definitely know how that goes. I just got a job serving at a restaurant, Mexican restaurant, and then I am also interviewing currently for a customer service position. So I'm excited about that. Um, I really align with their values. I was just reading their company values today. But um, aside from all of that, wait, I, actually, I want to add that, like with driving, something that's really hard for the both of us, uh, I know, is that like. We're constantly thinking, like, we need to make money today because there is money to be made. Like, you can kind of see it on your app. And so, like, you're constantly thinking, I need to make money today. I need to make money today. So you never actually have a day where you feel relaxed unless you have, like, plans or something. But still, even then, you're like, shit, I should be making money right now. But, you know, aside from, like, or, like, in contrast with, like, if you have an actual 9 to 5 or, like, an actual, I don't know, a job that you're on a schedule with... Then you have those off days where you're like, oh, yes, I get to relax. Like, today is my relaxing day. When, like, you don't really get those days when you're working for yourself because you never know when to schedule them, really. Yes, absolutely. And uh, also, I know that while we're doing all this inner work and healing and working through our stuff, uh, being in your car by yourself. Oh, my goodness. And a pretty much all day, every day <clears throat> is extremely... Um, overwhelming. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it can be very overwhelming. I am definitely an overthinker, and I am prone to having anxiety at times and I get in my car and sometimes I'm doing so much thinking that there's not even in it's silence in there like I don't even turn on the radio all I am doing is overthinking every life decision I have ever made and it's just um man it's it's got to be blocking me and sending chaotic signs and messages to the universe I am definitely sending out chaotic frequencies with uh, with not having a proper schedule right now and it's it's worked and it's served this purpose up until now but it is time to humble myself in a sense and pivot even though you know the restaurant industry is something I am working towards getting away from it is still a tool in my box that I'm going to break back out and use yeah absolutely and um I was actually talking to one of my friends last weekend and I was just telling her that like you know, when I got out of college, I really wanted to go in the direction of what I got my degree in. And it's been a a little bit of a um, struggle. I think everything happens for a reason, right? You know, I'm not meant for the jobs that don't come for me. But like she the thing she said, and she put it so simply is like, it's just not that serious. It's really not that (laughs) fucking serious, man. Boy, that's true. It really is. It really isn't, dude. And I'm not even gonna lie, like today when I was in, I had a phone interview today. Like, I utilized what I learned in a podcast, and I kind of, like, uh, regurgitated it back to this man. It was just about a story, 
anyway, the whole concept of the story is the fact that like, no matter what you're doing, you are still that, that entity inside. So like, if I don't get the social media marketing job because I want to help others, it doesn't mean that I'm not helping others in anything that I do. I am already that thing that I want to be and become. I don't have to search for it with a title or careers or things around me. I am already it. And that goes for each and every one of you. You are already where you want to be, be that person now you don't have to have a title about it but just very simple like simplistically put is like it's not that serious and you can already be that person who you are right now so absolutely and it's also important to remember that like even though society wants you to believe that like you are who what you do you are your career that you are whatever job you have and your worth is based on that it's absolutely fucking false you are worthy no matter what job you have no matter what like all of the jobs that are available to us in this world are needed Mm -hmm. no matter what the garbage man every day he's needed the bus drivers the people the lawyers the doctors servers servers, bartenders everybody's needed in some way or form and all that man every job can bring you pleasure if you frame it right yeah absolutely it's got to i mean not toxic positivity if you really hate your job and what you're doing definitely don't stay in it but also there's always something to be grateful for whatever situation that you're in and yeah that's what i told dakota when we were talking about these uh, new um, restaurant and bar jobs that we're taking like none of them are permanent honestly and we have our own boundaries now that are so much healthier and like mm-hmm. we can set the tone if it's not serving us there are ten thousand other bartending and restaurant jobs available right now we people are understaffed if this job isn't working not making money or if we're extremely unhappy we can pivot again leave it again and i think that's the beauty in it and sometimes we get wrapped up in all this well if i take this job i'm stuck there it's not true you can pivot at any time there's endless possibility guys and you just gotta reach out and grab it but aside from all of that beautiful life lesson that we just planted we are actually talking about something kind of completely different today yeah absolutely (laughs) we're gonna piggyback on some of the shadow work but um last week we kind of talked on family yeah and the the wonderful triggers that they can give out yeah we gave you a little insight on that but this week we're actually going to give you a giant insight on it so i know that um i was hanging out with a few of my friends And we were just talking about how, like, it's oftentimes it's very hard to, you know, when you're around your family, become the person that you are when you're not with them, if that makes sense. Especially when you're healing and growing and going through your own spiritual journeys. Absolutely. And I, I feel like for me personally, like, I think I said this in the last podcast, but like, it's like I do all this spiritual work, this healing, you know, this inner development, personal development, and then I get around my family and it goes out the window. And I'm like, what? Who is this person that that is around my family? I, I don't get it. Like I turn back into the seven-year-old me screaming and crying because I'm not getting my way in a sense. Like it, it's, it's crazy. And the thing that um, I know I wanted to touch on, I'm sure Danielle also wants to touch on this, is just like that you match energies with the people around you. And so, you know, think about it. Like, you're doing all this work and you're up high, right? And not no disregard to your family. I love my family. In terms of vibrations. Yeah. You're on a different vibrational level. Mm-hmm. Different frequency. And we do match frequencies. And that is all scientifically proven. And so, and like your family's a little lower, right? They haven't done maybe the more ex- like internal work that you've done. And so when you get around them, of course, you want to match that energy. And so oftentimes we do, you know, kind of go back to the person that we were because, you know, we weren't doing the work then. And, yeah. And this is anyone you hang out with. If you, yeah. You know, there are times if you ever find yourself like in a conversation you wouldn't normally engage in, but all of a sudden you're just, you're, your body's physically actually just matching the vibrations and energies that those people are putting out. It's not a bad thing. It's just different levels. Mm -hmm. And I remember another thing that Catherine had mentioned whenever we were kind of talking about families was that what we also want when we're around them is to be seen, heard, loved, understood, and accepted. And so when we don't feel those ways, our shadow kind of comes out. 
and in a form of like, you know, that's all we want. And so if acting out was how we got it when we were younger, it's going to come out again now, even though we've done all this work. And it's just another part of us that probably needs to be healed on a deeper level. And that's okay. You know, it's all a process. It's going to be a lifelong process, but just, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. Okay. Because I feel like something that really, you know, stunned me last time was like, you know, I was like, fuck man, every time I get around my family, I try, I try. And like, it just sometimes doesn't come out that way. It doesn't come out that way. And I'm just like, who am this? Who am I when I'm around these people? Like, how come I can't just show them the person that I often am every day when I'm not around them? It almost makes me sad and discouraged on myself. Like, am I going backwards? Am I not doing this right? What's going on? But guys, (laughs) it's not like that. Okay. Give yourself some grace and some compassion because it's a learning process. And I will say that this time around, I feel like even though maybe I raised my voice a couple times and, you know, was upset for a little bit, like I did better than the last time than I can see. And I feel like that is to say a lot in my perspective. Yes. Every time you, every time you move a little bit forward, it's, it's weakening the patterns. And every time you learn a different lesson and our family and relationships in general, the people that we're around the most are going to be the people that trigger us the most that's what they're here for honestly they're they're here to show us the things inside of us that still need to be healed they're the closest thing we have and also a lot of our projections come out and we project onto our family members and the closest people to us because well they're the closest people to us and triggers are definitely more brought up like everyone understands you go home for the holidays sometimes even just I know for me I can like call my dad on the phone sometimes and he'll say one thing and I'm instantly triggered and annoyed and sometimes I don't even know why but it's past conditioning past patterns coming up and um, we also I know when it comes to siblings and personally for me and I'm sure Dakota can relate is whenever you are healing and doing inner work and you try to talk to your family members and they don't receive it the way you are looking for that you also don't want to feel like you're better than or trying to outshine Mm -hmm. or trying to appear like oh I'm doing all this healing so I'm definitely better than like it and sometimes people don't take what you say the right way and they have their own projections and their own ego telling them that oh you're just better than us now oh and I, I deal with this with my brother sometimes and like they just don't understand and that's not a bad thing they're just not on that plane yet they're not there yet they're not they don't even realize what they're doing yet and so it's also it's kind of a brain they might not ever to be quite honest yeah and you do have to accept that like everyone's journey is their own you can't force it on anyone you can't you you can lead a horse to water but doesn't mean he's gonna drink like Mm -hmm. you just and you gotta be compassionate with them wherever they're at what if they stay there forever hold compassion and empathy for that because Mm -hmm. like they are and I'm talking about not toxic family here, if I'm, but they are your family. And if it's just a healing situation, like you, you got to give them room to the, do their own thing and accept them for where they are at. If it is toxic and it's a really bad situation, then I, by all means, disconnect from those certain family members. I know that um, Dakota and I are both privileged with family members that we love and that are very open. Yeah. And that aren't a danger to our mental health in a sense like I know that not everyone has um, that privilege with their family members especially the immediate ones and sometimes it really is a cutoff situation and you should hold those boundaries yeah absolutely I agree with that just to piggyback off of what you said when um, you don't want to seem like you're better than um, I feel like you're the one who kind of explained this to me for some reason I don't know I'm pretty sure it was you but like, just for instance, right, I, let's just give you an example, like, okay, I know me, like, my family, and I myself, still, big drinkers, right, big drinkers, especially when we're around each other, mm. like, we just, like, want to drink, I guess it's more like a celebratory kind of freedom feeling, obviously, when you're drinking, and so, I can say this, right, I'm like, before they come in town, I'm not going to drink that much this weekend, I'm not going to drink that much this weekend, and then they get here, and I'm like, well, here they are. Not one, I'm probably excited to see them, so I go overboard. That's always been a problem for me personally. Two, um, 
also, it's like, well, if I'm not drinking, they're, I know they're going to be like, oh, in their head, like, oh, she's not drinking. She's better than us. Or like, oh, she's not drinking. Like, they'll egg on. They'll egg it on. You know, something like that. It's like you don't want to. It's almost like you want to stoop to their level so you don't seem as greater than or or less than or whatever. You want them to to love and accept you so you pick up that beer and you start doing those things and those traits that you don't normally do when you're not with them. Not saying that I don't do those traits as is because I definitely fucking do, but like not as much if that makes sense. I, I really don't do it as much, but... The point is, is like, no matter what the trait is, it doesn't have to be drinking, it could be cursing, it could be anything. Yeah, any anything, and I, I relate hard to the drinking one too, we definitely both come from a family of uh, social drinkers, uh, it's very common for me and my siblings to be like, oh, we better have some drinks before we go to the, the main house, or if we're on the boat, or we're doing anything, it's definitely a drinking situation, and uh, that can also be extra hard when you're trying to heal and deal with triggers and you know when we're drinking I talked to Dakota about this a lot like changing and rewiring your brain and your patterns is hard enough when you're sober it's damn near impossible when you're mm-hmm. intoxicated yeah it's because your your shadow side comes out more so because it like has this doorway of like you know how the saying goes um like j- drunk thoughts or drunk truths or sober thoughts or something like that yeah drunk to truths or sober thoughts so it's almost like yes and no that's not always true but i will say that i have said some shit drunk that i probably would never say sober you know what i mean it's just like you have that leeway of like oh they're just drunk and you have that confidence per se to just do and and be who normally you're you're not and you probably don't actually want to be but enough on the drinking topic we could actually have a whole podcast about the drinking topic but um i do want to touch on something that i heard the other day in a podcast which is we teach people how to treat us okay and i've heard this saying before and i've definitely heard i heard it multiple times before but this time it clicked for me we teach people how to treat us and they were talking about your significant others people that you date you know your friends but for me it was like I teach my fucking family how to treat me. I program them. This is with anything like a dog. You treat them how to treat you, right? You anything, people, friends, you treat them how to treat you. And man, do I treat my, do I tell my family how to fucking treat me? Because every time they, you know, every time they disobey or disregard what I say, you know, they yell at me. And what do I do? I act out. I'm treating them that they're going to get a reaction out of me. I'm treating them that, that that's how they're supposed to treat me so that they can feel something. When, if I was just to sit back and been like, all right, well, okay, whatever. I'll just give you an example, a real life example. I, my sister bought her fucking 15 dogs. No, she has, (laughs) she has three dogs. She had three dogs with her and she has a small toddler and my there was like seven of us in my house, and I just wanted the dogs out. Not to it. mention our dog, or my dog, yeah, and her and my cat. cat. So literally, what four dogs and a cat, and, and like seven human beings in and like one living room. And the living room's not very big, let me tell you. And so I I had been drinking. My head was hurting. I was like coming. You know, I wasn't that. I wasn't like drunk or anything. But my head was hurting because we were drinking and not drinking. And so. Honestly, my head was hurting. I was just like, the dogs were barking and biting. And I'm just like, can you just put the dogs out, please? And my sister tells me no. And I acted out. And I was like, really? You can't, like, obey, like, what I'm asking you in my own fucking house? Like, when in reality, I could have just sat back and been like, okay, I'll take them out. You know? I could have just took it in my own hands. But what did I do? I taught them that they could treat me that way so that they could cre- get a reaction out of me. And that's the thing though, like they've, I've always been doing this. This is one of the first time I've been doing this since I was very little. They know that that's what they're gonna get out of me. And I'm not saying, and I'm not saying that's what they want, like manipula- manipulation, but people do want reactions out of people. That's just natural human senses. Like that's just what we normally want. And so when we don't get that, it's like, it, then we're like, okay, maybe I shouldn't. Uh, then you start feeling bad. I feel like for about what you said, in a sense, you know. Which also on the other side of that, it not only programs them, but it also 
reiterates how they already oh well look at her she hasn't grown she's not she's still the same Dakota she's still the same and same with me you know what I mean when you react in the same old ways it justifies their behaviors because she's the it's the same pattern it's the same circle yeah so how do we break out of this right so you're in that constant state of them seeing in the same seeing you in the same perspective and you seeing them in the same perspective but honestly with every action comes reaction right so just kind of try to step into the person that you want to become. And I know easier said than done, but with practice, it takes it t- takes practice. I mean, with time, it takes practice. And even though time is relative. But <laughs> <laughs> but it also comes down to having, again, those conversations with yourself. And when you are triggered by a family member or someone close to that you consider family or relationship-wise, ask yourself, like, what about that is in me what is it you know and I realized recently I just to be a little bit vulnerable here I recently with I've got a lot of family stuff going on it's changing the dynamics it's changing like I have to mourn a whole past life because going forward my family will be have different dynamics and for me my whole life I kind of grew up thinking that like my dad triggered me the most and I took after him and all of his like behaviors that I didn't like until recently I realized that I was actually acting out a dy- my parents my stepmom and dad's dynamic within my own relationship and like not the good parts but like the parts that I didn't that always triggered me about my mom uh, which is my stepmom but I when one day I was thinking about all these things that upset me with her and I sat back and I watched myself with my own relationship and realized that I actually act out a lot of those qualities in my own life and there's a projection and like it annoyed me so much and triggered me so much because it's my shadow self telling me like no dude these are qualities you possess that you don't want that you need to work on that you need to heal And so a lot of times we want to blame our family members for how they make us feel or this, this, and that, when really it's our shadow trying to tell us, like, no, you need to heal this within yourself. And then here recently with doing all this inner work, I, the other day, I was talking to my dad and he really, really triggered me. And I was in my car crying and I literally was like, my family does not hear or see me at all. And I told Dakota, like, it really feels like sometimes I can be in a room full of my family members screaming and no one would turn around to even ask me what was wrong. And in that moment in my car, I had to like stop myself and be like, okay, what do you need your family to say to you in this moment? How do you need them to hear you? How do you need them to see you? Because I have to do that for myself. I have to hear my. I have to be there. I have to hold my own inner child because personally growing up, I always felt that way. I've always felt like my family didn't hear me or see me or hear my cries for help when I said them or you know what I mean? And like, I really had to just start being that person for myself and like asking myself like, what do you want them to do? And do that for yourself. Yeah. The only validation that you truly need is the one that's from within. So anytime you feel like like that, you know, I because I feel like that sometimes too. Actually, almost all the time when I'm around my family, hence the story I just told you, I felt like they weren't seeing or hearing me or, you know, respecting me. And it's like, what do I need from myself as like my inner self, like my child, my inner child? What can I tell my inner child right now so that I do feel that way? Like, you could easily say, hey, Dakota, like, I just want you to know that I love you, I respect you, and I hear you, and what you're saying is truly valid, and I honor that with you. You can say things along those lines, and I'm telling you guys, I know it sounds woo-woo, but it definitely helps, absolutely helps you start to feel an inner strength and inner loving for yourself. Absolutely. I pretty much did the same thing and was just like, I I went as far as like literally holding myself, yeah, like patting and rubbing my own back in a sense and like patting my shoulders and just being like, it's all right. I got you. We got this. We here. You know what I mean? It's it, it comes down to being something so simple, but it truly is just a release and let yourself cry it out. And, you know, I have what I've done here recently with, I, I mean, I have... I'm blessed with 
very great parents and not just one or two, but I've got four. I've got an amazing stepdad, an amazing biological mom, an amazing stepmom, and an amazing father. Like I'm very blessed in that sense, but it also means that I have four people to work through and triggers and things and past traumas with all of them except my stepdad. He's a saint. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just really one of those things that's it's hard, but you got to work through it. And for me, that's something that might be helpful for you is that with, with my parents, I have gotten down and I've written them letters of forgiveness. I have never sent these letters. I deleted most of them. I've, it's just about getting everything you want out. And you can say it out loud if journaling isn't your thing, but like, let it all out. Get those emotions out. Get those feelings out. Get the things you want to say off your fucking chest and then burn it let it off into the world or save it or never rip send it, it rip it whatever. whatever suits you or if you just want to say what you want to say and to in the car screaming it wherever you just let those emotions out and y'all when i wrote the letter to my dad i said things that i would probably never or i don't know but i definitely just let every feeling i had ugly or not i just let it all out and um Dakota might remember this night, but like, man, it, it brought out emotions. I didn't even know I had, I was crying. It was a very deep experience, but it was so therapeutic. It was so therapeutic. And a lot of that shit, I don't hold on to anymore. And I held on to some of this shit for years, y'all, like years. And we don't allow ourselves to get things out as much as we should, especially when it comes to family members. And I know we can all probably relate to like, popping off onto our parents in our head and being like, but never saying a word of it. And you know, it's probably smart. You don't want to get your ass beat, but definitely release it in some way. Mm -hmm. And pen and paper is my, my go-to move, but it might be different for y'all, but I highly encourage the, the burn journaling and just getting those emotions out there. Yeah. I've done that before too. It was more based on like, it was actually based on money blocks. Like I was reading Catherine's book and, that was a portion of the book where she tells you to write down about like 20 things like you literally write down from as far back as you can go just like with the smallest things that bothered you from someone it doesn't matter who it is like even if it's something as oh that person cut in front of me at line like literally everything write it down as much as you can remember and then you go through each one and you forgive them and you forgive yourself and I don't know it was a very beautiful process for me because I feel like a whole bunch of weight was lifted off my shoulders after that and again, this isn't a one-time bam, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You got to keep continuously doing this. And I need to remind myself that because I haven't completely been <clears throat> doing that, to be quite honest. I need to get back more into my spiritual practices again. But again, <laughs> don't be hard on yourself. And it's all a process. Yes, having compassion for your journey and especially when you're doing inner work because there, you're not just going to be doing this work every single day with a perfect routine on it, a perfect ritual with it there will be days where you don't journal you don't meditate or you don't you maybe in weeks maybe a month but you can always return back mm -hmm. and so have compassion with that and you know have compassion on yourself and forgive the people around you because uh forgiveness is a gift you give yourself it is not something that just because you forgive someone doesn't mean you agree with what they did or are dismissing what they did or saying it was okay, mm -hmm. especially with family members, you know, uh, it's when it comes to forgiving certain things, it's something you do for yourself, not for them. Yeah, absolutely. Also, if it is something that you need to talk about with your family members, you should try to, you know, sit and talk with them, maybe come from a very neutral stance, you know, not when you're on that high of being angry or upset or sad, and not on the low where you're like, I don't care about nothing, but just a very neutral, like, okay, I think I'm in a good person, like a good calm, maybe after you meditate, I don't know, whatever you do, <laughs> but definitely come at that like standpoint where you can conversate with them over the things that maybe you are feeling or that you feel can be changed or maybe you need to hear from them too. I remember opening up to my mom and like for the first time ever, she opened up to me and I was like, wow, like i never felt that before and for the first time I felt like a deeper connection with her and it was just very beautiful because my mom tries my mom you know she always wants to be strong and I value her for that because 
that's how I am too. I always want to be strong in every situation. But sometimes, guys, like, it's important to let other people know, like, know how you're feeling. Especially if you're keeping it inside, like, and you don't talk to too many people about it. Especially people that are closest to you and that matter and that are maybe involved in that situation. It's in, it's definitely important to, you know, create and keep that um, love and respect that you have for one another. Yeah, opening a strong line of communication allows you to set healthy boundaries and be vulnerable with your family and honest and, you know, and even if they don't receive that in the way you expect, then at least you got to do it in your own way and now you can move forward with your own boundaries and it's a take it or leave it situation and just make sure you hold strong to those. That's something I struggle with so much. I struggle very (laughs) very much with a lot of this. It's, uh, I mean, like... Like usual, Dakota and I are learning too, and it's definitely a process. And we are programmed to want to please our family members, especially our parents. And we don't want to hurt them or make them feel bad. But truth is, sometimes you you got to speak your truth, be vulnerable with them, regardless of how they will feel. It's for your own good. Mm-hmm. Not like, don't go up to them and be like, I forgive you for this thing. But definitely, you know, (laughs) a real conversation. I know we just kind of piggyback off that. But but again, you know, if you don't feel like that is necessary, then do the whole forgiveness method. Just forgive for yourself because that's what it's for. You know, it's not for the other person. The other person doesn't even know that you forgive them. You don't have to tell them that. Just do it for yourself. It's important. I promise you. Uh, We are both hungry. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you hear growls it's a uh, for some reason my stomach wants to be a part of this conversation today <laughs> me too <laughs> so letting you know exactly what's up over here and like like y'all with family like Dakota's family came to visit recently and I can tell you that like I do the same thing when I'm with my family I all of a sudden become this <laughs> 2009 version of Danielle and she's not the best but we love her and the problem is is like I've gotten to a point where sometimes like I've even told Dakota like I don't even want to I'm going home to visit my family this weekend and I'm like nervous because I don't want to get back into old routines and habits and it is difficult I we definitely want to honor the fact that making these changes when you might be the only person in your family that is trying is very difficult and there's it's going to come with some bumps in the road but a lot of times there's a lot of freedom in just a short uncomfortable conversation you'd be surprised on how you can kind of move mountains and you like Dakota said sometimes get things you did didn't even know from your family members back yeah Absolutely. Really though, like I feel like I got super close with, well, I got closer with my mom after that situation. Um, I just kind of want to touch on the fact that, you know, whenever we step into the person that we want to be when we're around our family and we like, you know, don't match the energy that that's around us, but we start to realize like why, and it's maybe we're still inside, right? So like, why did this trigger me? Maybe not asking why that triggered you is that relative in that moment but maybe like how can I change like why this change like triggers me you know like how can I change this situation for me and also something if you're into human design I'm kind of into it I know a little bit about it but like I'm a I'm a generator do I know anything I don't know I'm a generator and with us it's very important that we don't react that we sit on things for about 24 I want to say 24 hours or so, 24, 48 hours. So, like, just think about it. If something triggers you, like, and you instantly have something to say, maybe try to take a step back and um, definitely think about, you know, A, why is this triggering me? But also, like, how can I change how this is triggering me? Like, can I go step in the corner and take a few breaths? Can I go write down something? Maybe not in that. Maybe it's on your phone. Just do it on your phone. I don't know, whatever it is, but really trying to understand, like, how can I make this a change in my life rather than why is this bothering me, even though that's important too. Um, And then, like, how can I shape it so that I can live, you know, the life that I'm meant to be living and stepping into the person that I truly want to become. So um, that's pretty much all I have for you. Yeah. Um, I think 
when it comes to family, there's a lot of dynamics and everybody's different. So we can speak on how it works for us, but it might not be, it might not resonate with you the same because you know, everyone has different family backgrounds, but if it does, take it, take what works for you with this episode, leave what doesn't as usual. And if you got a good message out of this, send it to someone you love, someone who might want to hear or need to hear the same message because relationships are meant for us to grow from, especially family. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right, guys. Well, I'm hungry. I'm going to go eat some food. (laughs) Yes. And as usual, thank you guys so much for all the support. Every episode, everything we do that you guys support is just, we love y'all for it and really appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. I'm so grateful for y'all. Forever grateful for you. All right. We'll see y'all next time. Bye. Thank you for listening and being part of this process. We are so grateful to have you guys alongside this journey with us. If you resonated with this episode, please share it on your platforms and tag us at Detox Your Habits. We would love to hear your insight and any downloads you received when listening today. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave a review letting us know what you'd like to hear next.